Well, welcome. I'm uh, David Kendall from the International Diabetes Center here on behalf of IDOC and pleased to uh, focus on a number of topics that uh, we hope are pertinent to the primary care provider. Um, I would like to begin uh, by focusing a bit more on the natural history of type 2 diabetes with a particular focus on the importance of beta cell health or the function of the islet. Um, I think it is now broadly accepted that the development of and the progression of type 2 diabetes is the result of a combination of physiologic defects, um, primarily focused on insulin resistance or the inability of the body to respond to insulin. But in that setting of insulin resistance, uh, a failing beta cell is ultimately what leads to the elevated blood glucose in type 2 diabetes. So there is now ever more focus on beta cell health. What can be done, one, to assess it, two, to preserve it, and three, ultimately to treat patients in such a way that we focus on beta cell health as one of the potential treatment targets. Um, why the beta cell fails is uh, still a bit of a mystery to those of us in both clinical research and clinical practice, but it is quite evident that over anywhere from months to years, uh, the amount of insulin both synthesized and released by pancreatic beta cells declines in patients with diabetes. And this defect may actually be evident very early, well before diabetes becomes clinically obvious. It's also suggested that by the time type 2 diabetes is diagnosed, there's a substantial impairment in beta cell health, which speaks to early efforts at diabetes prevention or at least early effective treatments that can preserve beta cell function. There are a number of approaches that we know at least limit the demands on the beta cell. Uh, simple things like carbohydrate restriction and weight loss limit the demands we place on the pancreatic beta cell. But when one looks at specific uh, pharmacologic therapies for diabetes, um, Things like the TZDs or insulin sensitizers, and more recently, incretin-based therapies like GLP-1 agonists and DPP-4 inhibitors, we know can enhance how beta cells work. And there's some evidence that these are therapies that may, in fact, either maintain or improve beta cell function over time. Why are these things important? Well, we know type 2 diabetes is, in general, a progressive disease where blood glucose can gradually increase over time, and there then is a need for subsequent or additional therapies. If beta cell health can be preserved or restored, that will one, prevent the progression of the disease and in increasing blood glucose values, and two, may ultimately simplify therapy and allow for stable blood glucose control over time, something we know is associated with reduced complications of diabetes.